Yo, what is up guys? I'm here hitting you up with a new video. Today I wanted to make a beginner's guide to Power of Destruction. A lot of you guys just started out, you're in the first week of playing the game. Actually, it's exactly seven days now. I wanted to get you through Power of Destruction and the early beginning strats of doing POD to get as much points as you can possibly get and advance on the leaderboard as well making a couple of improvements so also guys if you're new to this channel subscribe i basically upload every single day and sometimes i take a day off or two now let's get started before we jump into the actual fight against the dragon i want to give you a couple of insight a couple of strategies before we jump into it to give you a better understanding on how we want to approach this dragon overall with the limited abilities we have starting off in this game. So tip number one, you want to do the dragon as late as possible. Why do you want to do that? So when you look at the leaderboard, usually you know, maybe you read specific names quite often who are at the top of the leaderboard or where they rank. and Waiting with your Power of Destruction ranking is quite an advantage because if, let's say, it's not the case for everybody, right? But let's say you are competing for rank 1, having your main competitor doing his Power of Destruction first is a huge advantage because whatever score the other person gets, right, it gives you a reference point by just clicking on the team to know how many points did they get how many points did they get with team one? How many points did they get with team two? So you have a reference on how many points you need to reach to get the first spot. Obviously, this is not a strategy which works for everybody, but I'm just giving you an understanding on how you can improve yourself, right? Even if you're just going for like top 10 or whatever you're trying to get, right? Doing it as late as possible is a huge advantage. Obviously, that doesn't work for everybody, right? and with your schedule but giving you a rough understanding that if you're doing it late it gives you an advantage now as you can see at the bottom right i set up two teams i want to run now for power of destruction so there's one thing i wanted to tell you here which is important so as of right now it's probably not not as important because you do not have as much goal to level up all your party members and your party members will be weak as well so they will probably die super fast um, fighting the dragon because the power level of the dragon is actually the same for me as well 178k the main importance here is later down the line when you do the splits for survivability of your teams if you have min being you you want to use min and you want to use juhi the water healer and you want to separate these two units in two different teams so you have in one team team one for example you use min and in team two you use juhi the reason being for that is just using these two units adds a lot of survivab survivability to your teams, especially Juhi is crazy. She gives you healing, she increases the attack speed of your party members, and she has mana recovery as well. And she helps a lot, a lot with survivability for the second team. When it comes to the shadows, if you're in the red CP like we are right now, so we are at 139k CP and 178 is the recommended one, so that means we're lost all our crit rate we are now at 10 percent crit rate my recommendation in that kind of situation if you have blades and igris you do want to run blades overall because you are not critting as much so igris is not such a huge help because it, he provides you with four percent crit rate which is nice if you have high crit rate but if you don't have high crit rate then the additional crit rate doesn't do much for you so you want to run blades because then the four three percent additional attack helps you more with that then the next thing you want you want to look at is the dragon has rotations when it comes to elemental disadvantages, disadvantages and advantages with the recommended element. Sometimes he doesn't have an element. So for today, today we have, for example, a water element. It is nice to have like three weapons later down the line where you can just switch around to have an elemental advantage overall. But I feel like most of you guys will have the scythe and plum or maybe uh, the moon shadow and the plum, some, uh, something similar like that. So you want to run this especially since we now in not a elemental disadvantage but we are neutral this is fine to use also later down the line i would probably sp split uh, the teams a little bit apart for example we have now water i would usually put 
Sion now in the second team and run, for example, ammo or try or something, whatever it is, in the first team. So, because Sion adds a shield and adds more survivability to the second team and as well with Juhi together to make sure that that team survives and Min Byung Yu and Emma together also add a lot of survivability as well because of shield healing and stuff like that. But since we are under leveled in general, it is for starters a good strategy to just run your best team in slot 1 and then whatever you have left in your team too. Now basic strategy for Blessing Stone, so you start off with one slot. When you get to level 50, you get another slot, 60, another slot, and 70, you get the last slot available. Now, since we start off with just one slot, we have different um, Blessing Stones in the game, which you can use, for example, the Weakness Detection is very good, it gives you 8% additional damage for Elemental Weaknesses, so the Dragon has now a Water Elemental Weakness, so if you use the book with the Weakness Detection, that is great, but since we are under leveled, and I know for a fact this, boss when he's doing his big breath attack will one shot you daily quest completion for you right now is a necessity for survivability because now at the early stage of path destruction our goal is to survive till the very end of the of the battle now when it comes to general strategy for the uh, for skill usage in path destruction the one skill i highly recommend using is the crushing blow ascension break the fire one doesn't matter what element by the way, it really doesn't matter what element you're fighting, even if you, even if fire is weak to it, but the utility this skill provides in Path Destruction is insane because it charges your power gauge by 10% and decreases the cooldown of the user's ultimate skill by 10 seconds when the user uses the skill cooldown for 30 seconds. And the thing with this skill is it allows you to spam your ultimate skill more often in the battle and the ultimate skill also helps you to defeat the golem when he spawns. I will test it now. I do not know if we can ult kill the golem immediately. I highly doubt it to be honest and that's why we're using the uh, daily quest completion anyways. But just to let you know once you get at a certain point this one very very strong and for the second slot usually depending on what kind of elemental advantage you have you want to use the skill with the elemental advantage for example since we have now a recommended element is water we want to use the multi strike as the water element because the scaling is higher because you get like what was it 50 percent or 150 percent let me check this real quick so you get a 150 percent scaling to water skill so that's why you want to use a elemental advantage skill so you use crushing blow and you use the uh, elemental advantage skill. Now here's the thing, now because it comes to survivability and you're probably not even able to kill the golem right now, the alternative skill I can recommend and also depends on what kind of skills you unlock if you have those, right? Is even right now we have a wind disadvantage. The one skill I recommend if you have it obviously is the wind version of double slash. Why is that? So the wind version of double slash has two abilities when a skill hits it stuns the target which is only really viable for the golem when you spawn so you can actually stun the golem and but we use it for the second ability which is it charges char it charges the dash one time so you can recover a dash using that skill and that skill only has a 10 second problem so it's a lot more spammable than a couple of other skills and the thing is what it does for you is it helps you with your survivability doing the dragon now because sometimes you know at the very beginning you're kind of weak and most of his attacks are very scary and could potentially kill you or one shot you and you want to stay alive as long as you can get and especially when he's doing his big breath attack you do not want your daily quest completion to be triggered before that happens and this one helps you out because sometimes you run out of dash and you have to wait and then he comes up with another attack but you cannot dodge it because you don't have a dash available so this skill helps you out with survivability getting dashes back making sure you can dodge attacks now with these things in mind and strategy uh, which i discussed earlier we will just start the battle and usually you can decide if you want to do the left arm or the right one first you want to use your shadow army immediately at the beginning because also this one is quite powerful the skill here and make sure you dodge uh, the uh, deadly attacks of the dragon. You can start off with the left arm or the right arm, it really doesn't matter too much. I usually do the left arm first because I just, I'm used to starting off with the left first. And we just try 
to use our skills and try to deal as much damage as we can potentially deal. Now we dodge his attack, we do damage, right? Do our thing, keep dodging. We have one dodge left, now we have three dodges again. Spam our skills, we try to deal as much damage as possible. Now he's using that attack, we try to dodge it first, get a shadow step off, now do a skill again and plump and here we want to run away when he's doing that attack to make sure our party members stay alive and he's using that skill again because his skills are kind of random so now we shadow step again cast our shadow army we do that it might be a bad decision yeah, it's kind of fine actually never mind use our skills we have one dash now we use wind slash boom we have another slash available now we have the ult ready i will actually save the ult for the uh, phase where the golem spawns because I actually do want to know if we are able to kill the golem. I highly doubt it, but nonetheless, we do want to try it. So we spam our skills. This, this one attack is uh, very damaging, so make sure you dodge, 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 dodge. Use the skills, because now around the two minute mark, He's probably jumping up now. Let's do this. Do our double slash to make sure we have our dashes available. Now he's now's the purple stuff, right? So now the golem spawns. You can usually toggle him and then use the ult. If you're strong enough, you can one-shot him. If not, you can't. That's for that. So as we can see, no chance in hell we aren't able to kill it. I mean, we could potentially try, but I doubt this is possible and all, all our teammates are dead. So this is where you are weak, so you can stand here on the side and uh, dodge all the meteors. Also, if you're running low on mana, use this phase to just spam your basic attack here, because this one allows you to recover your mana. And this is why we uh, need the daily quest completion, because we are not able to clear the golem. And make sure here to not go immediately into the arms, because that thing is bugged. Because I don't know what it is, but if you go too, too, too near to the arms of the dragon, he will actually hit you with some random bullshit. And... Okay, uh, sorry. He will attack you with some random bullshit, which for no reason at all, no business at all, uh, we want to run away. We want to uh, make sure that we stay safe. Um, let's recover our dash here. So we stay here and dodge it. And our main focus is really staying alive here. This is our main focus. We do our attacks. So we have three dashes available. Dodge it again. Do our attack. We just try to really um, stay alive here. Get as much damage out as possible. Now we have one dash. Let's use Wind Slash to get a dash back. We cast our Shadow Army. Dodge again. We wait. Dodge. And now we can use the Scythe again. Try to get as much damage out in the last couple of seconds. And there we go. So with Team 1, we managed to get 6.8 million score. Let's register that one. And we are already, as you can see, rank 7. That's already an improvement from yesterday's score. From mine, he got like, what, rank 10? Um, let's check it out real quick. And then we will go into the second battle. I might skip forward to the very end here because I'm basically doing the exact same thing again. So from previous... So from yesterday's score, he managed to get 2.2 million. So 1.3, 800k. He plays on phone as well. Maybe he even pressed an auto. I'm not even sure what he did. But manually, we managed to hit 6.8 and we are already rank 7. Now, if we can get this up, we are potentially able to even hit rank 2 with this strategy I was just talking about. Because our main plot is to survive. So let's try the second run. Um, I will speed things up. Maybe I skipped there. I don't know yet. Uh, we will see. Also, quick tip here. You can just toggle to the different arm if you're attacking one arm and then use the ult to hit both arms at the exact same time that's a little trick from my side especially when you cannot break the arms 
Yeah, so in this phase, again, you can stand here in the corner, for example, where the yellow arrow is. Just spam your basic attack and recover your mana back because you cannot do anything anyways and you're not able to kill the golem. So just stand here and get your mana back to 100%. Now we are at the end phase, the last 30 seconds. We just want to make sure that we stay alive, even for the, these last seconds. Get a shadow step off get our attacks sometimes it's so buggy with the boss that you cannot even if you use your shadow step cannot hit the um, defense break but now we got what 2.1 million well let's take it we will just take it right and we got rank 4 huge improvement from uh, yesterday's score from 2.2 million uh, we went to almost 9 million with just a little bit of tricks and made the progression from a top 10 score from the last one to now a top 4 score which will give us still sadly sadly um, the two boxes if we would have gotten just a little bit more be in rank 3 which gives us the purple ones and here we could have gotten at least 5 blessing stones we were just lacking damage and also um, I'd say the goal to level up the units properly to make them survive just a little bit longer to provide a little bit more damage to improve on the score because there's also a there's also a cap on how far you can potentially reach right depending on how far you leveled your weapons what weapons you're using what teammates you're using how are they leveled but i hope this video helps you guys out to improve your scores even further with just using the right strategies, fighting the boss, stay alive, improve your score. I mean, we just... So with just these little tips, we quadrupled our score from yesterday. Obviously, there was probably some advancement in CP as well, but I also do believe doing the right stuff helps you improving your score as well. That's it for today's video, guys. Thanks, guys, for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and leave a comment down below. It helps the algorithm. And see you with the next one. Deuces.